Thank you. Gracias. Merci. Danke. Thanks. So this whole month, we're talking about gratitude. And remember, where is it? Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. So what's another way we can say thanks? Oh, I know, Hawaiian. Mahalo. That one's a lot of fun to say. So while we're doing this, let's go ahead and check out today's Bible story and meet back right back here. Remember, no matter how we say thanks and what language it is, it always rocks. Dan Ku Shu In. Dan Ku Shu In. Wow, German is our hard language. <laughs> Hi, I'm Erica. I'm learning how to say thank you in other languages because if I ever travel the globe, I still want to have gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. But saying thank you is really hard as it turns out. For instance, in Armenia, if you were to open the door for me, I have to say, kanorakalution, if I wanted you to know that I was grateful. <gasps> or, if you gave me a stick of gum in Mongolia, I'd have to say thank you by saying, Beyalarla. And then, if we were in Spain and you gave me directions to the biblioteca, <gasps> I'd have no choice but to say, Grace. Ease. Gris grassies. Gris grassies! Oh, I actually know that one. <gasps> Nine times out of ten, it seems like we forget to show gratitude when we should. But as you'll see in today's story, saying thank you doesn't have to be that hard. Even in Romania! Mall to a tech. Everybody! Yeah, that seemed right. Devan Shivad. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Outside the village on the border between Samaria and Galilee lived 10 lepers. We didn't know their name or their stories, but we did know at least one of them was a Samaritan, a group that Jewish people distrusted. Call that man Zach. Hi there. I'm sorry. Not allowed to shake your hand. Leprosy was a painful skin disease, and there was no doctors or medicines to treat it. But even worse than the source were the loneliness. Lepers weren't allowed to be around anyone who were healthy, not even their own families. They had to keep more than a social distance. So if Zach had a wife or kids, probably hadn't seen him in years. Oh, my little boys, all grown up by now, I bet. The 10 lepers' life seemed hopeless. All they can do was stand back and yell at anybody who passed by. Stay away! Don't come close. But we do need food. If you could just leave some under that willow tree by the creek, uh, we'd be grateful. Then, one day, news reached the lepers of travelers approaching along the border road. Big crowd. Here it's that Jesus fella. The teacher? They say he makes sick people well. You're a Samaritan. <laughs> Why would he care about you? Hey, you know, what have I got to lose? Zach hobbled toward the road, walking stick in hand. The other lepers straggled after them. They can see a crowd now, traveling along the road. People won't like us standing so close. I'm not throwing away my shot. Zach can see faces now. The crowd grouped around a man in the middle. The man had a strong face and kind eyes. Jesus, master, have pity on us. To the leper's surprise, Jesus stopped right in the middle of the road. 
Pastor Jesus, Jesus over have here. pity please. on us. Please have Pastor. pity on us. The crowd around Jesus backed away, whispering. Jesus stood firm as Zach and the lepers dared to limp closer. Jesus! Master, have pity on us. As the lepers neared, Jesus took a long, clear look. Everyone went silent. Zach could hardly breathe. Then Jesus smiled. Go, show yourselves to the priests. Zach gasped. The only way a leper could approach a priest was if that he confirmed that he had been healed. But as Zach glanced down, his heart sank. His knees and his feet were still shriveled and splotchy. His knees still ached. Oh. Jesus moved on and the crowd followed. The lepers stared at each other. Well, that happened. I don't get it. Well, we should go to the priests, like he told us. Uh, I guess it can't hurt. Any more than it already does. Limping, the lepers headed out across the field towards the town. They hesitated as they reached the creek. We'll have to wade across. Painfully, the man clambered down the bank. Zach's stick got caught in the twisted root of a willow tree. <clears throat> the stick went flying and he tumbled to the ground. Ouch! Instinctively, he jumped to his feet. How'd you do that? Do what? Just jump up. Zach glanced down again. This time, his feet and his legs were strong and whole, skin clear and healthy. Look, my skin, it's clean. The other man glanced down at their own arms and legs and bodies. I'm all better! Woohoo! The lepers laughed and danced till they cried, amazed at what Jesus had done. You gotta get to the priest! Race you! The lepers splashed across the creek, hurling towards the town. Zach stopped at the water's edge, and the others ran ahead. I'll get to see my boys again. But even as Zach imagined the joy that would come, a face flashed in his head. Jesus, he's healed me. He's the one who's made me whole. Turning back, Zach hurried toward the road. He ran fast, catching up to Jesus and the crowd as they reached the village. Jesus, Jesus. The crowd parted quickly as Zach headed straight for Jesus. Praise God, I'm well. Zach threw himself down on the dusty road at Jesus' feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Zach lifted his head. Dust mixed with tears of joy. Jesus smiled, but his eyes searched the row behind him. Weren't all 10 healed? Where are the other nine? As Zach shook his head, Jesus turned to the crowd. Didn't anyone else return to give praise to God except this outsider? Everyone was silent. It was clear that Zach was the only one. Jesus smiled down at him. Get up and go. Your faith has healed you. Zach leapt to his feet as he hurried to see the priests. He had delayed his chance to see his family by a short time, but it was worth it to see the man who had given him back his life. So there were 10 guys healed by Jesus. All of them were probably really grateful, but only one of them took the time to actually say it out loud. I think sometimes, we're kind of like the nine guys who didn't say anything. It's not that we're not grateful that mom made dinner and washed the dishes. We are grateful. We just assume mom knows that we're grateful. So we forget to say, thank you. And we're definitely grateful when a teacher takes extra time to help us with schoolwork. We just, I don't know, don't feel comfortable telling her, thank you. And any time we take a moment to think about all the things God has done for us, our hearts are probably overflowing with gratitude. But we don't actually tell him, thank you. You probably feel grateful all the time. To parents, to teachers, to friends, to God, to the guy who bags your groceries. All you need to do is remind yourself to take two seconds to say the words, thank you. That's the one thing to remember today. Say thank you. Or, if you prefer, you could say, Arigato, Maki. 
Terim, Terimaka. See. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. We can show God exactly how grateful we are for Him just in our everyday walk with Him, just as we follow Him. And we've gotten pretty good at saying thank you today. And remember, the Samaritan gave us a really great example of how to do that, and that's simply by just saying thank you. So let's do that right now as we talk to God. Dear God, thank you for all the things you've done for all of us. You love us so much that you sent Jesus to be our Savior. You care for each one of us, and you want to have a relationship with each one of us. For all these things and more, we want to say thank you. Please help us remember to say thank you to others when they've helped us too. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next week, guys. <laughs>